friends, my name is Chrissy and welcome back to A Little Glam, A Lot of Mom. For today's video, I thought I'd show you my process of crafting this uh, DIY nativity scene. I'm not calling it a tutorial because I don't think I did a very good job at the instruction of this project, but either way, I do hope you enjoy the footage. For the base or landscape of my scene, I'm using the 4mm thick wool felt roll. Um, I am also going to be pulling out one or two colors of the 1mm thick Holland wool felt in the Naturals collection uh, for the barn. By the way, I do want to add that most, if not all, of the materials used for this project are from achildstream.com and as always check the description box for links. I'm also going to be using some wool roving for needle felting so I'm using a brown and I also ended up using this gray color and some green yarn for bushes. Of course you're going to need your basic essentials like needle and thread. I use embroidery cotton thread, a needle felting needle and foam pad, some fabric scissors, and a handbook for hand stitching or embroidery would also be helpful for a beginner like myself. Starting off with the base, the 4mm thick wool, I'm going to just freehand and give this more of a shape. Um, so just cutting out mostly uh, some of the edges and again I did freehand this and this is the shape that I ended up with. Adding brown wool roving to make a path and first I place down my wool roving to map out my placement and then I needle felt it in place. I wanted to add a few bushes so to make those bushes I'm using the nature spun worsted weight yarn and I fan it together like this uh, trying my best to keep it in this little bundle and then needle felting in just the bottom ends of the yarn into the base so I'm angling my needle to make sure I'm securing the bottom ends of yarn into the wool and once it's secured in well into the wool, I'm cutting or splitting apart only the loop ends and trimming it down even. I started off only with one bush as I added more elements to my landscape and then I can go ahead and uh, just work with the placement a little bit more and I did end up adding more bushes. So at this point, I did feel like my path needed a better outline to make it pop. So I decided to make a pebble border. And for this, I used gray wool roving. So I'm warming up my fingertips and rolling the roving into tiny balls, just really working it with the warmth of my fingers and my hands. And I did this technique with about five to six pebbles at a time, again, playing around with the placement before then actually securing them down with my needle. I continued this process on both uh, sides or both borders of the path. And yes, this is tedious, but in my opinion, it was a nice detail to outline the path. For the barn, I used the 1mm thick Holland wool felt. Uh, that is about 8 by 12, the square. And so I cut that in half and I took one of the halves, folded that down the middle, and then ran a stitch across the folded end to create the roof. And then for the backing of the barn, I just freehanded a pattern using my Strathmore tracing pad. I like to pin my pieces together and remove each pin as I'm stitching around and use whichever embroidery or stitching technique you are comfortable with. The next step is to secure the barn to the base and I did that first with the needle felting needle 
but then I did run a stitch around all three sides uh, to double secure that just because I do know that it's going to get a lot of play. All right, finally moving on to our nativity peg dolls. I do want to apologize about the artificial ring light lighting. During this peg doll footage, I do craft my peg dolls at night because they require a lot of attention to detail. I'm using a few patterns out of the Making Peg Dolls book by Margaret Bloom. The instructions in the book prompt you to paint the base of the peg dolls. So if you're going to choose to paint the doll, then I'd recommend that as your first step to give it time to dry before adding your felt embellishments. I'm not going to paint my peg dolls. I rather cover the base with felt and I will tell you why and show you how I do that in just a moment. But first, I do like to trace all of the patterns I'll need first. And for this, I do highly suggest picking up a pad of tracing paper. Once I've traced all of my patterns, I do like to cut them out and have them ready to pin onto my wool felt. If you do plan on keeping your pattern pieces, I personally like to label them. For example, Mary's cloak, and then add the size of the peg doll to uh, make it easier to reuse in the future. For the base, I've measured out a rectangular piece uh, with my tracing paper, enough to go around the body of the doll and a little bit of give for stitching. Through one of the two longest ends, I run a line of thread like so. So in through the top and then in through the bottom and I repeat this all the way through the end. Then I gently tug the thread and it cinches or scrunches the material together to hug the body of the peg doll perfectly. Then I'll just run a stitch to close the fabric around the peg doll and that makes the base or the cover uh, for the base of my peg doll. Okay, moving on to some of the clothing embellishments or accessories. This is a cloak. And so I repeat the same process where I pin down my patterns to the fabric. This next step is optional, definitely not necessary, but personally I like to stitch around my cloaks to give it a seam detail. Finally, securing the cloak with a few stitches down onto the base. And this is why I prefer to use the wool fabric for the base rather than paint. Otherwise, you'd have to tack on the clothing or the embellishments with some sort of glue. And in my opinion, it just doesn't withstand play as well. I suppose that wouldn't matter if your peg dolls are for decorative purposes only, however ours are for play with three young children. More often than not, I use yarn for hair, but these little dolls will have little hats on them, so I'm painting on the hair instead. And my favorite paints for my peg dolls are the Lyra Watercolor Opaques. And finally, to stage our nativity scene, I do this more as an invitation to play for the littles. I like to set up scenes like this for them to find and then engage in hours of play. I chose to make the star removable so that this scene can double up as a forest scene after the holidays. For the manger, I took half of the shell of a nut we found outdoors and I used a tiny bunting baby peg doll, painted it white, and wrapped it in wool roving for baby Jesus. For the hay, I used an off-white yarn using the same technique as I did for the green bushes. For the face beard, I used white or gray wool roving, and I did tack that on with a tiny dab of hot glue. And the tiny details or embellishments on the hats of the three kings are all just uh, stitched or embroidered with thread. With a few scrap pieces of the four millimeter thick green felt, I ended up making a felt pine tree. Here I'm attaching an angel ornament to a twig so that it's floating over the nativity scene. And yes, this angel is made from the Snow Fairies kit from a child's stream that I hauled a few videos back. I was unsure about this kit, but we actually did enjoy making these ornaments. 
All right, friends, this is going to be my last video until after the Christmas holiday. I am taking a week break from YouTube to soak in the most of the next few days. Uh, as much as I can. I am still active for the most part on social media, so if you want to see more of us during this short break, follow me over on Instagram. My friends, my wish for you is that you are also soaking in all the family time. If you do celebrate Christmas, Merry Christmas, Feliz Navidad, and Happy Winter Solstice.